the, in general, there's a disconnect between the students, the populations, the community, and higher education. So some of the contributing factors, the first being a lack of sufficient staffing. There are guidance counselors in these high schools. That is amazing. But those guidance counselors often have to deal with behavioral issues, home issues, emotional, mental health issues that the students are all bringing into school, and then focus on college and career preparation. It's too much for any one, two, or three individuals to focus on in a school day, and it absolutely makes sense why college would not be the focus of that person's job. Um, there's a hyper-focus on standardized testing, so a lot of times states are required to do a bunch of testing to make sure that they can get funding and that they look good in the eyes of the public, which is great, except for you are losing the sense of teaching those critical thinking skills and learning for the sake of knowledge, which is something that will be passed on for students to be successful in college. Social pressures and mentality. Um, there's still that stigma that if you're doing your work, if you're studying, if you're looking at that Ivy League school, like you are a nerd, you don't fit in, you're not cool whatsoever, and that's something that continues um, with the younger populations who go to school. So the last three contributors are the ones that I'll actually be tackling. So this abstract image of college. This is something that has really been continuous. It's kind of this idea of, okay, college is all the way over there. It's this destination, and I don't have a bus ticket to get there, but I see all those people over there. I just can't really connect with them. So that's an issue. Um, insufficient parental and guardian involvement. There are a lot of resources out there for families to attend a college night at a high school, but there's really low attendance. And so just having that disconnect between your family or your caretakers when you go home and having them not understand where you're coming from is another big aspect of the problem. And then a lack of knowledge about current resources. So I came into this project originally thinking, oh my gosh, like I went to school in Virginia, so they have all these resources and Maryland just sucks, right? No, so I found out that there are a lot of really great college preparatory programs and a lot of really awesome things that the schools are doing. Just simply every single person I had talked to had never heard about these things. So these latter three issues are the ones that I want to tackle with my project. How do I plan on doing that? So I plan on building a bridge between those students and those existing resources, as well as building a bridge between the parents and caretakers and the resources in order to ensure a full amount of support for those students. Um, hence the term, it takes a village to raise a child. The manner in which I would do this is by creating a two-fold program that tackles both parts of the problem. So the first program will be initiating inspiration through narrative. So I plan on creating a cohort of college students who are from Prince George's County, who have low-income backgrounds, who are minority students, who may have English language learning backgrounds, who may be first-generation Americans, and who are pursuing amazing things in education. I want to create a cohort of students to share their narrative to high school students in order to inspire them and to get them motivated to see themselves in that place. My idea is that if you can look around in a classroom and see someone at the head of that classroom and they look like you and they've gone through a similar struggle that you may be wanting to go to, you can see yourself at that far destination. You can get that bus ticket because you actually see someone in front of you your age doing amazing things. And then secondly, through connecting those students, I would also like to provide workshops to the parents and caretakers to actually explain to them what it is that their student has to go through in a very detailed manner to encourage those table side conversations about college and to make sure there's not a disconnect between what students learn in the classroom and in these extracurricular programs, but that that's continued at home. So with talking to the students, we actually not only be sharing our narratives and our stories, but following that up with saying, okay, if you think that this is something that you want to pursue, here are a few programs that you can go look into, and here are some websites and some other avenues in which you can um, find that information that you need. Because a lot of times there's resources out there, but if you're not interested in pursuing them, you're just not going to get them at all. So going into a little bit more detail about the activities for parents and guardians and how I plan on doing this, um, it, it'll be a three-part process. Again, the workshop. So one, explaining to them why college is important and that understanding that concept of why their family, their student, and their children to come will have more economic success and a better well-being essentially by pursuing education in a very broad sense. 
Two, taking them through the entire process of looking at what the college application process is, talking to them about testing, telling them what their student actually has to do to prepare for SATs and or ACTs, how to even afford fee waivers. So when I applied to those 27 schools, I did not pay for a single application. And it's because I took the initiative to look into those things and I didn't pay for my testing. And if I didn't know that the only thing that those institutions could tell me was no, then I wouldn't have done that whatsoever. So just uh, showing students and families that they can do that as well. And then looking into financial aid, again, making that image of college seem more realistic, showing that you can afford this institution, um, even if it's an amazingly expensive one. And then the last process is really putting the you, me, and he together. So the you being the parent, the me being the student, and then the he, the higher education. So taking that concept of college and really positioning the family in it and seeing themselves in that, that image. So my mission is twofold, as I explained. The first being to connect high school students with existing college preparatory resources and position college within reach by sharing the narratives of undergraduates with comparably situated backgrounds. Secondly, to establish a holistic support system by educating parents and guardians on their child's college process and thus assist in diminishing the intangible image of higher education. My vision. Uh, which is kind of the long-term goal, is I envision an interconnected and mutually dependent community where all students understand their intellectual potential, receive diversified support from a variety of networks, and can access valuable resources in successful pursuit of higher education. So this is kind of a circle, even though it looks like a rectangle on the screen. So you're taking the individuals who are already there, so the high school students and the families, you're using those resources that are there as well, which will come with the high school, so with those guardian counselors, with those um, college nights that are already occurring, the college fairs, those third-party resources, which I'll touch in a next slide, and then incorporating that new group of undergraduate students to push uh, people to have a desire to go into higher education, which will then trickle down in a type of capital effect uh, for younger students to come. So outcomes. In the short term, I'd like to increase students' desire to pursue higher education and further cultivate a college-going culture. Uh, so I really appreciated kind of the experience that I had was that there was no expectation of was I going to college, but where I was going to college. And I think that that's something to be said, obviously, because not everyone uh, will have that pursuit of going to college. They may want to pursue a career, but making that real connection between what a postgraduate plan looks like and how to even look forward to the next step if that's what they want to choose. Uh, that's something that I would like to influence. Increase students' awareness of college preparatory resources. So if they have that interest, having them actually receive those tangible programs, that tangible SAT practice book to see how to move forward is something I'd like to do as well. Enhance parents and guardians' knowledge of their students' experiences through those workshops raise students' confidence and greater sense of self through self-empowerment. And in the long term, uh, similarly, having students and families feel sufficiently educated on their roles within the college process, so decrease that amount of anxiety that comes along with something that you've never experienced before. Having students feel inspired by the narratives of current college students, hopefully so that they can infiltrate their stories back into their communities. Increasing the intention to attend a four-year university by 15% and increasing the transferable generational social capital between students and families. My action plan uh, following Mount Vernon, I'd like to establish that cohort of dedicated and diversified college students um, by reaching out to different universities that are local in Maryland, asking for referrals to students um, who might be interested in something like this, but also going back into those high schools in Prince George's County, asking guidance counselors for previous students they had been in contact with. Collaborating with these amazing organizations um, in the middle. So College Summit is actually a great program that believes that peer-to-peer -peer contact is most motivating. So they train 12th graders and 11th grade students to lead three different campaigns in their high schools. One, to have every single senior apply to three or more colleges, to have every single senior complete their FAFSA early, and to connect college, career, and high school. So I'd really love to 
um, get more students from the schools that I'd like to target involved in those programs. And then First Generation College Bound is a program that really helps students actually be more successful in college as well. Prince George's County Public Schools, that's just the system that I'll be working with and then coordinating all of this into workshops. So my timeline, again, is kind of a brief overview of what I said. Right now, I really want to work on establishing that connection with the students, really reaching out to them, developing how we are going to share our narratives and how that can be most effective and most received by students, uh, really getting promotional materials. That's what I mean by campaign, so that I can start to uh, show different people what it is that we actually want to do in words and creating those established collaborations. So really solidifying um, how I will work with those other programs that I am motivated by. And then fall, spring, and summer is just a progression of actually putting those narrative visits into happening and actually going to schools and providing the workshops, kind of increasing in number and assessing how they work along the way. So just a few challenges and necessities Challenges uh, particularly will actually be finding those students just because a lot of times it's really hard to lose contact with someone. People change their numbers all the time, email, and it's really hard to say, okay, that student was really great in high school. Like, what are they doing now in college? How can I track them down? Maintaining relevance and consistency. So with college, a lot of preparatory resources are now being put online and really done by third party. How can we make sure those interpersonal connections are still relevant? Cultural competency, so as I said, English language learners come with their own different types of resources that they'll need and how can I establish uh, a presence in that community and make myself be credible. And then defining success, because a lot of what I define success is has to do with someone's feeling of how they interact with the concept of college and how they see themselves in that future. Some of the resources to acquire, again, like I said, finding those actual volunteers getting those materials for the parents to provide in the workshops one-on-one, -on -one, having a space to do that in, and then, again, prepping all of the words together to promote this to someone. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, Joe. Sorry? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the lighter blue percentage should be percentage of students who are not eligible to receive free and reduced meals. So the majority does. So the specification of the percentage of students who have the intention of going to a four-year university is 50%, and then there's half of that that intend to go to a two-year university. There, I have not found any data that shows the intention of matriculating into that um, transition between two-year to four. But I do know that the intention of community college is also something that's present, um, about half of that number. Yes. I think that is a really good question because obviously that's not something that I can control for. And so I don't ideally want these populations to necessarily um, kind of go together. So the students that we're talking to at the schools may not necessarily be those same students of the parents that we are talking to. So those workshops will be separate that way we can reach both populations regardless. Because if you are a student who's pretty much sustaining yourself and like going home and like taking care of your brother and sister, your parents may not be there, may not be able to go there. So at least you can have something in that school day uh, that exposes you there. I have a lot of friends 
in Prince George's County who fits those descriptions, but I'm trying to be really intentional in determining where I pick from those individuals because oftentimes a lot of the friends that I know who graduated from Prince George's County, they're the salutatorians, they're the valedictorians, they're going to Georgetown, they're going to Brown, and I want to make sure I have a really well-rounded cohort so someone in the room can resonate with someone else at the beginning of the room and just kind of make sure I have all of those different communities and demographics I want to represent. Yeah, so I'm hoping that, um, first of all, I've started making those collaborations with the two programs. So I just met with College Summit Peer Forward last weekend, sorry, last week, and I'll be meeting with the Upward College Bound program manager this upcoming week. So I'm hoping that they can be liaisons, but I also want that cohort of volunteers to be my essential team um, in establishing the plan, but then in the future looking to, you know, have someone be kind of more managerial. Yeah. I think uh, that will be really essential in the summer and the fall, just because summer is when students will have most of the time to work on the process. And so if they're writing essays for their Common App, they can get a lot of review time in there and actually get down to the nitty gritty details. And a lot of the later kind of details about financial aid and stuff like that can come um, after they've already applied. And once they've got kind of like a, an idea of where they'd like to attend and figuring that out from there. So I'm thinking that summer will be the, the bulk of the work and the workshops for parents in particular, but keeping those uh, narrative visits throughout the year so that we are continuing a trend, changing up the parts of our stories that we're talking about to fit where those students might be in the process is important as well. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you all.